Hi everybody, this is going to be a video of a painting that I finished a couple of hours ago and this painting is going to show you how uh, the, the true purpose of this video is to show you how to layer not only your colors against each other but to make sure that you maximize your effects by using different solutes within the resin. So when I say solutes, I mean paint, ink, mica powder, spray paint, paint, um, alcohol ink. They're the solutes. The base is the clear resin. So during this piece, what I want to do is, if you've seen some of my ocean paintings, um, I seem to be on a little bit of a run of very light kind of um, sort of Caribbean kind of colors, very, very beautiful blues that you see in maybe the Gulf of Mexico, um, sort of, you know, Florida, et cetera, and, and more Southern to that. And um, I, over the time of doing many ocean pieces, I've gathered a lot of different products in different varies, varying colors or um, types of blue. And uh, I can't seem to walk past a blue in the, uh, in the art store without maybe contemplating purchasing it because I'm always looking for um, extra effects. So what I've put down here is I've gone from deep dark blue um, which is a golden fluid acrylic and it's phthalo blue and it's in the green shade. Uh, phthalo blue, the golden acrylic ink, uh, paint, sorry, is, uh, does have various shades. There's a red shade. This one is the green shade um, because if you use the red shade up against other kind of blues and greens, it will have a component that maybe you're not going for. Um, it'll give it an extra dimension you may not like. <clears throat> and uh, the teal that you're watching me put down right now, because I'm always looking for the product next to the solute I used, be it golden acrylic paint, the one that's the very teal blue, um, the kind of rich kind of bluey green in the middle, they're quite deep. Well, actually, I'm smoothing it out right now that is um tattoo ink mum's millennium and the color is cadillac turquoise they have kind of funky names to their products um, that's a beautiful bluey green and uh, the very light blue that you're seeing is uh let's have a look i've got my products in front of me it is a ellie chem resin acrylic ink and it's called royal blue and alongside that so that's an ink okay so if you put an ink next to a paint or a mica powder you're going to get some kind of interest in transition because of the solutes their properties are so different um, i have another uh, two inks in this piece and that is close to that Ellie Chem uh, Royal Blue, I have their Sea Blue, which is a very vibrant blue also. And because these are inks, they're semi-transparent. They have a um, translucency property to them. So when you look towards the middle of the screen and you see those colors kind of poking out, kind of rich blue, a little bit brighter, that's an ink. Um, and a lot of that is because of the properties of the ink and being that it's an acrylic ink and not a paint it's not so dense so up against budding up against paint and mica powder it is going is likely to let its presence be known and that's why you're seeing it kind of pop in the middle there and the other uh, Ellie Chem ink that I'm using is my absolute favorite of their product range and that one's called marine blue and marine blue definitely has some green in it um, and those go very well together. So I've put down all my blues and my bluey greens. I do have mica powder in there. I have a black diamond midnight blue mica powder, which is inclined to disperse out throughout the piece and just give kind of a, a subtle blue sparkle 
um, in certain components of the painting. Um, like that a lot. So that's Black Diamond Midnight Blue Pigment Powder, which is mica powder. And I that's one I never run out of. Their Midnight Blue, I always have it because it's very dark. So it doesn't lend itself um, to be kind of, it's not, it's not the brightest color, but when it's combined in this type of palette, it has a subtlety that is just beautiful in this kind of palette. So it's dark blue, but it has a, um, a real sparkle. And because it's mica powder, it likes to sit on this close to the surface. So it disperses out and gives a kind of a nice sparkle within the blue, um, which is quite subtle. Uh, you're seeing me transition some um, some kind of layering through using my uh, popsicle stick, which is how I usually like to put in any kind of transition lines. And the first color I'm putting down is a Rust-Oleum Gloss White spray paint in resin. Um, and I'm coming behind and alongside it and overlapping it. I am using Rust-Oleum Metallic Spray Paint in Titanium Silver, another one of my favorites. This painting today is all about me using my favorites. These are all colors that I'm inclined to use um, a lot. I, you know, this is my favorite. So uh, when I selected my palette today, I purposely chose not only the, what I believe would go together, a range of solutes, ink, paint, spray paint, mica powder, um, but also a color palette that would complement each other, which um, I believe these do. So I'm running those lines through and they have the white, so that's popping up through, but there's also the metallic titanium silver, which is adding some real sparkle to those transition lines that are kind of carving up some movement within the piece. This, uh, what I'm actually painting on, and I'm doing the sides right now, is a artist wooden panel, and it measures 12 inches by 36 inches with a one inch depth. Um, and it's a wooden panel, it's not a traditional gessoed canvas um, with mixed media art you by all means you can use gessoed canvases um, I, there is some preparation that's needed I personally prefer the end result of using a wooden panel there is no give there's no sagging there's no drawing into the middle there's no pooling it is beautifully level um, and gives the painting some real structure and quality I believe and that wooden panel I purchased at Dick Blick which is an online art store you just see me spray a little bit of 91% alcohol onto the piece I always do that towards the end of my piece or I rarely don't and the reason why I do that is because when that uh, that warm resin and the 91% alcohol comes onto the surface sprayed on, any paint that's sitting at the surface will naturally um, just subtly kind of disperse. So as the alcohol kind of eats it a little bit, kind of, and breaks it down just very subtly, I come behind with the blowtorch and that accelerates that effect. And it enables me sometimes to... Um, you can have a color at the surface and a color just beneath it. And with the addition of heat, they may change positions. So, and that's very typical of using various solutes because they, there is an interaction between them every time they come into contact with each other. So um, this is my kind of doing my last torch to make sure air bubbles are out and uh, I have a finished piece that I'm happy with and I'm going to bring you in for some close-ups and this is a short video but I hope you enjoyed it and I will be posting some close-up uh, photographs to my Facebook group which is Resin and Mixed Media Art with Tina Kamala 
and my Facebook page and uh, also my Instagram um, account. And uh, well, I hope you enjoyed this, guys, and I'll be posting some close-ups.